Greetings, everyone. Pete Pardo here from Sea of Tranquility. Welcome to another episode of our favorite guitar riff masters of all time. We have arrived at day 26. We're finishing up the month in just a couple days. We have been counting down our favorite riff players, right? Those guitarists who have cranked out some sensational, memorable riffs. And again, what is a riff? This is a guitar passage that generally kicks off a song. It could be a chord progression, a little lick, a flurry of notes that may be repeated throughout the song, but that riff just kind of draws you in. Could be heavy, could be jangly, could be whatever. It doesn't really matter, but the important thing is it's that little guitar part. All right, that repeats throughout the song that you really remember. It could be, you know, big and doomy and crushing. It could be funky. It could be jangly. It could be whatever, right? But it's it's that guitar riff, that little guitar pattern, that guitar passage that plays throughout the song. That's what you remember. Maybe sometimes even more so than the great chorus, right, of the song. So we've got 31 days here in the month of April, and we are counting down all of our favorites, and for each one of our favorite riff masters, we're given three favorite riffs, right? So uh, quite a few of them. Actually, is it 31 days or 30 days in this month? I, I lost track of what. There's 30 days, not 31, Pete. 31 is May. I can never keep track of days of the month. It's just ridiculous. I got the old. What can I tell you? See, thanks, Chris Allo. Um, <clears throat> anyway, today, uh, I could not go a month of doing something like this without including one of my favorite riff master duos of all time. You know, we've done a bunch of these duos where you have two guitar players in the band cranking out the riffs, right? Not just one. This one instantly came to mind. They had to be in this list. And, you know, for maybe some of you watching, maybe you've never listened to the band they come from, but uh, they're well worth your time. You know how much I love Doom, right? Well, there's... Not many better than Bruce Franklin and Rick Wartell of Trouble, the great upper Midwestern doom metal legends, right? Just an incredible, incredible, incredible band. These guys <clears throat> know how to crank out the riffs. You know, probably got their influence from bands like uh, Black Sabbath, of course, and Judas Priest. In fact, if you listen to the music of Trouble, and you listen to the two riffs, or listen to the riffs from these two guys, from Bruce and Rick. To me, it's like a perfect marriage of the early Black Sabbath with the early Judas Priest. That's what I get the most when I listen to the music of Trouble, and specifically the guitar riffs, which are just absolutely massive. So I knew I had to include them in this month, but then I was like, shit, Pete, <clears throat> how the hell are you going to pick three songs? Because every album of theirs whether it's the early, really slow or crushing, doomy stuff, or even the more kind of upbeat, close to stoner, rock, psychedelic rock and doom that they did on their 90s albums. No matter what albums you're looking at, every song has a ultra, ultra memorable riff. And are any better than the others? More memorable than the others? I guess that's in the eye and the ears of the beholder, right? So this was really difficult for me. It's like I have to talk about them. But which freaking songs do I pick, right? So I uh, I decided, because I'm going to give some love to the three first albums, because they are riff-tastic, full of riffalicious riff-ology. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go with, from the very first album, I'm going to go with The Tempter, all right? Which is just killer. It kicks off the album. It's just savage. It's brutal. It's heavy. It's just doomy and crushing and all that sort of stuff and man these guys you know and generally speaking uh, I always remember Trouble the guys in Trouble playing Gibson guitars most of the time flying V's I know Rick generally is playing a fl flying V Bruce I've seen him on flying V's and Gibson SG's and I think Les Paul's if I'm not mistaken uh, there are the guys in the band all right Bruce and Rick standing side by side there. Um, yeah, so The Tempter, I'm going to go with first. Second up, I'm going to go to their second album with the title track to The Skull. I love these album covers. They're <laughs> just absolutely amazing. Uh, the Skull is just incredible. Again, and it's the last song on the album, and it just, it just 
pile drivingly heavy and just uh, the tone of, of the guitars on these albums are just absolutely immense absolutely immense there they are again right there and for the third riff and Bruce I know Bruce always watches the show so Bruce let me know what you think of my picks I know it's probably hard for you in fact I would really like for Bruce Franklin like I said because I know he watches all the time I would love for him to list his three favorite trouble riffs that he ever played on down in the comments below i think that would be really cool bruce if you could do that uh, i'm gonna go to the uh, run to the light album the third album and i'm gonna go thinking of the past which is another just face melting riff on here and again if you uh, you know just think of like stained class meets master of reality Right, that that's kind of what the music of Trouble, <clears throat> to me, is kind of like. They're 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 different than you know. We t talked about Candlemass the other day, right? Uh, Mats and uh, Lars from Candlemass, and and Candlemass and Trouble, are, you know, there is a similarity between the two, but not. Definitely, one sounds like an American band. One sounds like a Swedish band. That's, that's without you know question. Uh, and they both have the influence of Black Sabbath, obviously. But I think there's there's certain characteristics of Troubles music that is very different from Candlemass, very different from Saint Vitus and Witchfinder General and you know the Cathedral and any of the other Doom bands. Something really different going on with these guys, and uh, that's what makes them kind of unique. And, just absolutely love trouble trouble so yeah so thinking of the past uh, again these ones you know big and heavy and just massive and uh, the, the production on these albums are really really great i always love the guitar sound in trouble from these dudes i mean just absolutely immense and i'm gonna cheat today i'm gonna throw a fourth one out just because i can and i'm gonna go with at the end of my days from the self-titled trouble album from 1990 i believe this came out in. uh and which is just and, and here on this album uh, they're moving slightly away from the epic doom of the first three albums into more of this kind of like groove laden kind of stoner uh, doom uh, with little psych influences which you get on the, the couple of the albums that come afterwards uh, you know just just great man just you, you can't not listen to at the end of my days and just head banging on but it's just it's just crushing uh, just kind of early Sabbath with tons of groove and just yeah just immense stuff can you tell i love this band I, trouble is just so great I, I still remember many 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 years ago the first time i ever saw trouble live they opened up for king diamond i think it was in long island i saw the show maybe it was at the ritz in new york city i don't quite remember i think it was in long island some weird place in long island uh trouble opened up for king diamond and i remember just i, I had never listened to trouble before uh this was probably like i don't know 1988 or 89 something like that it was on king diamond i think it was on the abigail tour or maybe something like that maybe even been earlier than 80 89 because it was either it was early in king diamond's solo career so maybe it was fatal portrait i think it was abigail anyway bruce if you're watching you can kind of true me up on that or when that tour was but it was in some place in long island some weird venue i don't think i ever went back to again but it was just really cool to see king diamond in trouble um on stage you know one after each other so anyway that is my pick for today well those are my picks for today uh the mighty trouble bruce and rick from trouble great riff masters two of the best of all time if you've never listened to trouble you really need to check them out they're just absolutely an amazing amazing band and uh, if you are a fan let us know your three favorite riffs from these two dudes and otherwise let's hear your pick for today and your three favorite riffs from your player and visit us on the web at www.seatranquility.org we're on facebook we're on youtube all together all the damn time please subscribe if you haven't already and click on that notification bell so you get alert of all of our content as it posts and please do hit the like button before you leave also down below we got the links to our ko-fi page for channel donations as well as our merch page and uh, we'll see you tomorrow with another of our favorite riff masters of all time stay tuned we got uh, new album reviews coming up here on the channel today so don't miss out on those and uh, i'll see you real soon i am p pardo take care everybody have a good one bye-bye